Hi guys, uh, welcome back to lecture 3.3. This is part D. If you remember, we've been talking about how to find derivatives. And we talked about a number of different rules, constant rule, sum rule, multiplier rule, power rule, product rule, and quotient rule. And this video is about the chain rule. And as I mentioned in class, you are going to love the chain rule. It will change your life. So let's just jog your memory. The last video you watched was about trig functions. Um, and the kind of running theme here has been that in general, the real way to find a derivative is to use the limit definition, right? The limit of the difference quotient. But sometimes there are these tricks that make it a little bit easier. And so far, the tricks have helped us with certain kinds of equations. And then there are certain kinds of equations which we still don't really know how to take the derivative of other than using technology or the limit definition. Look at the six functions on the screen. How would you take each of these derivatives? Right, so maybe the more interesting question would have been to say, which one of these functions can you take the derivative of? Using what we already know, we can take the derivative of the left-hand side equations. This is just a matter of using power law, and you need to think about radicals and reciprocals as exponents, but you know how to do that. This would be a very simple um, product rule example. Of course, you could also do distribute the e to the x and then use a product rule on each of the halves. Might be a little longer that way. And then this is clearly a quotient rule because we're dividing two different functions. Now, these functions at initial glance don't look all that much different than the functions on the left, but the right-hand side functions are functions that, given what you currently know, we can't take their derivatives. Couple notes. First of all, when you have e to the 2x minus 1, you can't split this up as e to the x minus e to the 1. There's another way you could rewrite it. Maybe you can think about that. Similarly, with the square root, you can't just split this into three square roots. And cosine of x squared is different than cosine of x times cosine of x. What this really is, is the function x squared inside the cosine function. And that idea of one function inside of the other, well, that's about composing functions. So the chain rule, which is the next rule that we're going to learn, helps you with compositions of functions. Here's the formal statement of the chain rule. You should write this down and make sure that you memorize it. It goes in cram, and you need to understand the meaning, not just the formal definition. It says, if f and g are differentiable functions, then the derivative of their composition, as in if we compose these, f of g of x, and then take the derivative of what we get. The derivative is going to equal the derivative of the outside function f composed with the inside function just as it was originally times the derivative of the inside function. Another way to write this would be df dg times dg dx. df dg is the same thing as saying take the derivative of f and where you would normally write x, plug in the g function instead. I don't know that this notation is particularly helpful. I generally stick to this original one. If you need more time to write this down or to think about what it means, do pause right now. Otherwise, we'll move on to a couple examples. OK, using the chain rule. I like this first example because technically speaking, we do already know how to take this derivative. If we really wanted to, we would foil it out right? 3x minus 1 to the fifth really just means take five of these binomials and multiply them all. As you can see, I've started the work here. This is going to be fairly tedious. Now, it would work, and I expect you to do the work if you have no other ideas on a test or on a quiz or whatever. But the beautiful thing about the chain rule is it's going to show us a much quicker way. Instead of foiling it all the way out and then using power rule where you multiply the exponent and drop it by 1, we can do something else. This something else is called the chain rule, and the key to the chain rule is to be able to look at a function and think of the function as a composition of two other functions. Simply put, you're going to look at a function and you're going to try to identify an inside component and an outside component to the function's rule. In this case, I would think of the function 3x minus 1 being inside parentheses to the fifth power. Once you can see that your function has an inside and an outside component, you actually want to write them down as their own functions. So they're not just parts of your original function, but actually two functions in their own right. 
And here I have to navigate kind of an awkward notation situation. When we originally wrote down the chain rule, we used the name f for the outside function and g for the inside function, but I've actually, in this example, used f as the name of the entire function put together. So I'm actually going to switch letters, and um, you should be aware that I'm doing this so it doesn't confuse you, but it also should be something that you are comfortable doing yourself, because ultimately the letters f and g don't mean anything. It's just the idea of there being an outside and an inside function. For mine, I'm going to just switch back to using u and v. So we think of the chain rule like this u and v will be your outside and inside function respectively and then the actual derivative will follow this pattern in both cases we start with the derivative of the outside compose it with the inside and multiply it times the derivative of the inside okay i know this is all nonsense to you let's get on with the example you'll see what it means in a second here so to recap here's our plan we've got this function and we're going to identify this function as having two parts an inside and an outside and then we're going to just double check that if we compose these two parts, we will get the original function. If that's true, then recognizing this composition allows us to use the chain rule. And our last step will just be to plug in each of these components to the formula in the chain rule. And then we'll have our derivative. Back up here, let's think about what u and v should be. Usually it's easier for the people to identify the inside function, and I'm going to call v the inside function. In this case, it's 3x plus 1. Sorry, minus 1. There we go. And the outside function sometimes can give a little more trouble because you have to think about it in function notation. Clearly, the parentheses to the fifth power is the outside part, but what function is that really? Well, it's the function that takes an input and raises it to the fifth power, which is actually the function x to the fifth. And I know there's no x to the fifth written anywhere here, so you just need to understand in your mind that the idea is we're taking an input and raising it to the fifth power. The input x is like a name for the input. It's not that there's an actual x to the fifth going on. It might be easiest for you to see this if you try it out, try finding u and v, and then actually compose them. What would it mean to take v of x and plug it in to the rule for u? Well, u of x is x to the fifth. If we plug in v of x to that function, it would be something to the fifth, and the something in the middle would be 3x minus 1 which gives us 3x minus 1 to the fifth, and, and that is the original function. So it's fair for me to say that the original function is u composed with v. Once we've proven that that's true, which sometimes you can just see, but you could always check this way, we're now going to use the chain rule. And the chain rule says the derivative of these things composed equals this. Well, what does this mean? This means if you find the derivative of u, you're going to take that derivative and plug in the v function and then multiply it times the derivative of the v function. So I left a little space up top and we need to find du and dv. In both cases it's just a simple power law, multiply and then reduce. And now that I've got all four components, this should remind you of product rule and quotient rule, we're going to come down here and we're going to plug them in. So u prime, the derivative of u, is the function 5x to the fourth. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that function, but instead of writing x, I'm going to leave an open parentheses because I'm actually supposed to plug something in. So really, it's going to be five parentheses to the fourth. That's the u prime. Now, v of x is just the original v function. In this case, it's 3x minus 1. So that 3x minus 1 is going to be plugged in right inside the u prime function. Notice that this is the original u function. It's not the derivative of the inside. It's just the inside function. Now, the last step is that we multiply times the derivative of v, which is 3. This is actually really just your answer. There's a little bit of simplifying we could do. So if I multiply the 3 and the 5, I would probably say that the derivative is 15, 3x minus 1 to the fourth power. And of course, you could follow that out, but really there's no need to. And that's it. So much easier if you think about it than doing that long way of foiling everything out.
Now, I know this first example, we took a long time because I was explaining all the notation. Once you understand what each of these pieces mean and how to plug into the chain rule, this is very, very quick. Let's do B. You're going to be surprised at how quickly it goes. For this example, the equation we're trying to take the derivative of is cosine of x to the fourth minus x squared. To, tar to start the chain rule, you need to identify your outside and your inside function. And it's important that your outside function is the first one, which we've been calling u. In this case, it's pretty clear that the outside function is the cosine function. And remember, even though we don't see cosine of x explicitly in the problem, this x is just like a placeholder. Really, the outside function is cosine of something. The inside function is the easy one to see, x to the fourth minus x squared. And I'm just going to double check before I move farther into the problem. If I were to take the inside function and plug it into the outside function, would I get f of x? Yeah, absolutely. That would work. I can imagine it just like that. So since I have the correct u and v, I'm going to find their derivatives, which is just a matter of memorization, really. And then we go ahead and apply the chain rule. We start with the derivative of the outside function, which is the negative sine. And instead of negative sine of x, I leave parentheses open. And into the derivative of the outside, I plug in the original function on the inside. And then I multiply that times the derivative of the inside, which is 4x cubed minus 2x. From there, you'd probably want to simplify a little bit. In this case, I always move the variables out front. And I probably could distribute these terms, but there's nothing that's going to simplify really here. Um, certainly, we wouldn't distribute them to the inside because these x to the fourth and minus x squared is inside the sine function. They're not just normal variables to have any kind of variable or, or exponent rules apply. So I think that's really how I would leave my answer unless I thought something else was going to simplify. I've given you a whole bunch of examples because I want to make sure that you see um, kind of the ins and outs of the chain rule and get really good at recognizing your outside and inside functions. For the first couple, I will talk through kind of the setup, but go ahead and get started with one and two. We'll talk about those and then I'll have you do some more. So to get set up with number one, you need to identify the outside and inside function. When you look at f of x, what should be the outside function? What should u of x be? What should the inside function be? Great. Next step, find the derivative of each of these. Good so far. And now we put all the pieces together using the chain rule. And just like that, we're pretty much done. Make sure that you didn't accidentally combine like terms or multiply here. The 2 and the 10 can't be multiplied. The 2 as well as the x fifth are inside the cosine function. Let's set up number 2 together, same way. Find your outside and inside functions. So you notice again just that it's often easier to identify the inside function. If you got this wrong in the Ed puzzle, here's how I'd think about it. Um, the inside function is like the, the smallest thing or the thing in parentheses here. And so to me, I noticed that 2x cubed plus 4 is um, kind of inside parentheses here. We don't actually see them, but we could imagine putting parentheses like that. So now what I would do to find the outside function is I would actually think backwards. What would I plug this into? to get a total function of e to the 2x cubed plus 4. And thinking about it that way, it seems clear that the outside function is e to the x. Because if I took away the x and put parentheses there and then plugged in my inside function, I would get my original function. And that's the goal, that you can think of it as a composition. Of course, next step, you need your derivatives. And the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. And then we're ready to set up the chain rule. I start with the derivative of the outside, but instead of x, I plug in the original inside function, which was 2x cubed plus 4. And then I multiply that times the derivative of the outside, and simplify or rearrange if I need to. And I'd probably write my final answer something like this. For those of you who have big handwriting, um, I would just ask that you use parentheses and make a really concerted effort 
to making sure that your exponents stay higher than your normal terms so that you don't confuse yourself and so that it's clear when I'm grading your work that this is all an exponent. It's not like being multiplied times e or anything.